Willa of the Wood, Chapter 8. As the long, single-file line of wolves moved through the fog, Willa couldn't see anything but white ahead on either side or behind her. She couldn't hold back the pang of fear. Where were the wolves taking her? She held on to Luthien's neck as the wolf lowered her nose to the ground and followed the large tracks of the wounded bear. Years before, when her mama could still walk, Willa remembered crouching down in the undergrowth of the forest with her twin sister, Elio. The two of them watching their mama's wrinkled fingers tracing reverently over the tracks of the ground, the deer with their cloven hooves, the mountain lions and wolves with their four claws, and the massive bear tracks with five distinct claws on each foot. Where the earth was soft, the prints were easy to see, but where the bear had crossed over rocky ground, the tracks faded and then disappeared. But Luthien kept her nose to the ground and followed the bear's scent. No animal in the forest other than the bear itself had a better sense of smell than the wolf. A whirring, whistling noise passed overhead. Willa looked up, trying to figure out what it was, but the fog was too thick to see anything. She glanced behind her and saw the two young pups looking timidly up into the fog. They didn't know what it was either. When Luthien stopped, the other wolves gathered around her, the leader of the pack. And as the mist cleared, they all looked out in the same direction. Willa lifted her eyes. She gazed in awe across a flat, silver shimmering body of water, a vast lake that extended for as far as she could see before disappearing into the mist. Water poured down from the natural springs in the surrounding rocks, but the surface of the lake stayed perfectly smooth. As great flocks of mergansers, teals, and other ducks wheeled overhead, their whirling refle reflections were like dark winged fish swimming in the smooth water below. Willa looked at the serene water of the lake in astonishment. She had lived her whole life in a world of whispering streams, gushing rivers, and tumbling waterfalls, a place where water was always moving. But this flat, motionless lake was an amazement she had never seen before. Noticing a dark shape moving down the slope, she turned to see the old sickened bear making its way towards the sandy shore of the lake. The bear lumbered into the water and then sunk its body down into it, grunting air through its nose in sounds of immense relief. The water seemed to soothe the pain of its aching body. Willa looked along the edge of the lake. There were other bears too, many of them brown or black, but others cinnamon or blue-gray, all up and down the shore, some of them swimming or wallowing in the water, others just sitting in the wet sand at the water's edge. Luthien jolted in surprise when a massive white bear rose up in front of her, roaring in anger. Willa pulled in a startled breath and clung tightly to Luthien's back, pressing her face into the thick fur of the wolf's neck. But instead of pulling back at the sight of the gigantic bear, Luthien leapt forward with her teeth snapping in a savage growl. The vibration of the wolf's growl vibrated through Willa's body. She pressed herself to Luthien as the bear stood on its hind legs and roared, outraged, that the wolves had dared to come to this sacred place. The other wolves of the pack pulled back and the whimpering pups scattered, but Luthien held her ground. Willa could see that this bear was much larger and much older than any of the other bears. This was his lake, and he was going to protect it from intruders like these wolves. A single swipe of his enormous paw would easily kill a wolf or a Farron girl. But then to her surprise, she realized that the bear wasn't just looking at Luthien. He was looking at her. Her skin and hair had reflexively blended into the color and texture of the wolf's fur. In all appearance, she had become part of the wolf. But the bear appeared to be able to smell her, and its dark eyes gazed in her direction. There was an uncertainty in the bear's expression, as if he thought he might know what she was, but he hadn't seen her kind in a long, long time. As the white bear slowly stopped snarling, Luthien did the same. The bear peered at Willa. She wanted to look away, to avert her eyes. She wanted to run away, but she held the bear's gaze. Finally, the white bear dropped down onto all fours with a muffled grunt, and Willa let out a breath of relief. Thank you, she said in the old language, loud enough for the bear to hear. My name is Willa. My grandmother told me about your strength and your wisdom. I am honored to meet you. The white bear made a low guttural sound and turned his head and body toward the lake. He's letting us through, Willa whispered to Luthien. 
As Luthien stepped slowly toward the water, the other wolves stayed where they were, even the two males who served as her guards. They seemed to understand that only Willa and Luthien were allowed to pass, and pressing the issue further would result in a battle that neither the wolves nor the bears wanted to fight. As Willa and Luthien moved cautiously past the white bear, she could see that he was extremely old. He didn't appear weak or decrepit, but she could see the knowingness in his eyes and the gray streaks of time in his weathered face. She sensed that he had been living far longer than any ferron or animal she had ever met. For many years, her mama had taken her and her sister, Allie, through the cathedrals of the giant hemlocks, teaching them how to speak with trees more than 500 years old. Willa knew that bears normally didn't live as long as Farron, but she had a feeling that this particular bear had been a cub when those age-old trees had been saplings. As Luthien took her down to the edge of the water, goosebumps rose on Willa's arms. She knew it was going to be cold. Every mountain stream she had ever entered had been shockingly, bracingly frigid like melted snow. But as Luthien lowered her slowly into the lake, Willa realized the water was warm and soothing. It felt as if the light of the sun had become liquid. As she leaned back into the water with only her face above the surface, her body felt weightless, her arms rising buoyant at her side, her hair floating around her head. She sighed in relief as slow, gentle waves rippled one after another through her body, lifting the pain away. She felt the torn skin of her wounds slowly coming back together as if a month of healing had, occur had occurred in a few moments. Her grandmother had told her and Allie of a hidden lake that, th that the Cherokee called a Tagahi and a great white bear who protected it. From a distance, the lake looked like nothing more than one of the many mist-filled valleys, but hidden below the clouds was a powerful healing place where sick and wounded bears came for refuge. The great white bear encouraged his ursine kin to come to the sacred lake, but guarded it fiercely from all others. As Willa floated in the water, letting its healing powers move through her aching wounds, the white bear suddenly rose up onto his hind legs in alarm and looked toward the rim of the valley. The quills on the back of Willa's neck went taut as she quickly got her legs beneath her and crouched down in the water. She couldn't believe it. It was the man who had shot her. He was standing on the rocky ridge holding his killing stick as he stared out across the mist-filled valley. His dog stood at his side. It was clear they had followed her here, and they were still looking for her. Luthien had carried her a great distance up through steep, rocky ter ter terrain that must have been exceedingly difficult for the man to climb. He must have run as fast as he could to chase her. What storm of dark anger and hatred had driven him to follow her so far? Luthien stepped forward, growling and snarling, her shoulders bunched for the attack. The wolves of the pack maneuvered for battle. The white bear moaned a low and menacing growl, his teeth clacking as the other bears gathered to his side, ready to fight. Don't see us, Willa whispered as she gazed up at the man, her heart filling with dread, not just of the human and his dog, but of what would happen if they came down into the valley. Don't see us, she said again. She knew that if the man saw the wolves and bears, he'd become frightened, shooting his killing stick this way and that, and they'd attack in return. The man and his dog and many of the wolves and the bears would die. No day folk, man or woman, had ever seen the healing lake of the bears. They might have heard about it from the stories of the Cherokee. They might have even searched for it, but none of them had ever lived to tell about it. Just turn away, Willa whispered as she gazed up through the fog toward the man, Whoever you are, whatever you want with me for your own sake, please just turn away. 